And oh, there are two types of people in this world. There are those that ask me, Dr. Jones, what do you do for a living? And then the other kind of people are those that know what I really do. And when they see me, they go, aren't you supposed to be a college professor? And my answer is always the same. Whenever they ask me, aren't you a college professor? I always answer, part-time. How's it going, adventurers slash viewers? I can see that you found the map to the kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Before you go with me on this adventure, I please ask that you subscribe, like, share. Leave a comment on the section below. And most importantly, watch to the very end. Follow me from the beginning to the end through all four adventures. Whether we're talking the Raiders or the Temple, or the Crusades, but especially the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And the same thing goes if you're on Instagram as well. Like, follow, share, leave a comment on the section below, or leave any imprints on the map. And most importantly, watch me and follow me to the very end. Follow my lead and always look out. There could be uh, natives around here. Well, we get to it, okay? So, it's the height of the Cold War and famous archaeologist, me, Indiana Jones, is returning from his latest adventure in the Last Crusade, finds out how his job at Marshall College is in jeopardy. He meets Mutt, a young man who wants Indy to help him more than, than he could ever imagine. He wants to help Indy he wants Indy to help him to find the legendary crystal skull of Akator, and the pair set out for Peru. However, deadly agent Irina Spalko, played by Kate Blanchett, is searching for the powerful artifact too. Because the Soviets believe it can help them conquer the world, just like the last two enemies, just like the last couple of enemies that I fought myself. So... Here's my take on the story. The fourth installment of the Indiana Jones franchise certainly doesn't disappoint for me. For me personally. I know this was the one Indiana Jones movie that flopped for everybody, but listen to what I have to say. It pretty much keeps the same momentum that the last three were known and loved for. Nothing has really changed. The adventure was just as exciting, thrilling, and just as fun as The Last Crusade. I'm not going to say that The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is better than The Last Crusade. If you got a different opinion, keep it to yourself while we're on this adventure. But they are both better than Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of the Doom. Again, I say, keep your opinions to yourself. It is always a treat to see a long-awaited next chapter in a franchise. This, this is almost with every other franchise that's been called off the rail and then they get picked up many years later. And Kingdom of the Crystal Skull does change things up a bit. Even in the midst of the Cold War in 1957, Indiana Jones so happens to get caught up in another adventure to seek out the Crystal Skull, which the Nazis are desperate for. The movie also recycles personal elements into the story like family and how archaeology and adventure is pretty much the desire of everyone in the fam. Between all the artifacts in the saga, the Crystal Skull is a more physically stunning prop. It's beautiful. It's shiny. Just like the Holy Grail, the crystal skull holds its own supernatural powers. The skull also had psychic pro properties, including the ability to communicate on a primitive level with people who stared into the eyes of it for a prolonged period of time. Now, here's my rundown on the characters. Up to this point, Harrison Ford, me, Harrison Ford has always given this role everything he got with giving the audience a hero to believe in. A hero they can enjoy going on adventures with, but this time he is pretty much forced by Nazis to find it. Of course, with him knowing about these artifacts better than anyone, he could pretty much guess that it wasn't going to end well. 
Now, I did mention how weak the intentions of the Nazis were in the previous films to capture the same artifacts that he is going after and use it for their own personal gain. However, even though their intentions are pure evil, they wish to use the skull as a way to combat the Americans in the Cold War. Yes, it, it, it's, you want to use it as a weapon in war to help yourself win, but it's still evil. Shia LaBeouf plays a pretty decent supporting role. Now, Indiana Jones is not the first franchise that comes to mind when it comes to fan service, but the inclusion and the return of Indy's first love, my first love, Marion Ravenwood, was the cherry on top. Karen Allen hasn't lost any energy for playing the character at this point in the franchise either. I guess we really are that compatible. Mm. Rotten Tomatoes gives Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull a 78% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Again, I say, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is not just as good as his predecessor, but better than the first two entries with the more precious artifact, the return of an old ally, my Mary. Keeping the same adventurous energy that we know and love, the Indiana Jones is known for having. So for that, I will give this movie 8.9 SOs out of 10. So that is the end of my review, adventurers. You can let me know what you guys think about this one, if you like this one better, or if you, if you could consider this a flop. And thank you for being on this adventure with me. Peace out. Okay, guys, thank you for watching that review. So um, I know I mentioned how I will be telling you, giving, sharing some surprises with you about the YouTube channel tomorrow. I said I said I will be sharing it tomorrow, yesterday, and tomorrow is today. So here's what's going to happen. Starting next week on Monday, I will be giving you a play. I will be starting a new playlist for the Marvel movies. Now, some of you are like, Sterling, didn't you already do the Marvel movies, all 23 MCU movies? The MCU. But listen to what I'm saying. When I say Marvel movies, when I when I deny the fact that I'm not doing the MCU, but I'm doing Marvel movies, I think you guys pretty much understand. That's right. All of the Mar all of the Marvel movies that are not made by Marvel Studios. I'm talking the X-Men, all X-Men movies, the original Spider-Man trilogy, and the Amazing Spider-Man, uh, the original Hulk movie, the both Fantastic Four movies, pretty much all of the Marvel movies that came out that were not made by Marvel Studios. This is going to be this is going to be another fun playlist for me. This this is going to be a very nostalgic trip for me. This is going to be a nostalgic experience for me. And speaking of nostalgia and speaking of great great playlists of films, on Tuesday I did say that I'm putting the Black Lives Matter playlist on hold until February for very good reasons. So, on Tuesday, I will be starting my playlist for Pixar. I know I, if you've if you've seen my reviews on these Marvel movies, I didn't mention this already. I mean, I love Disney movies. I'm one of those people that I'm one like most people. I'm one of those Disney fans out there. I love dis. I love the 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 regular brand. I love the Centro brand. I love Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, all of that. Everybody, everything within the Disney brand. So I am very excited to be giving you my. Reviews on all of these Pixar movies started Tuesday with Toy Story, but that is that is just my announcements for you. Those are the exciting announcements I wanted to share with you guys. So you can stick around for those playlists, and I hope that you guys enjoy watching these reviews just as much as I enjoy making these reviews about both of these playlists. So I'll see you guys next week, and have a great rest of the week. Peace out.